Hi everyone and welcome to my week eight wrap for week eight of term and I'm here with Jess today. You'll be happy to see Jess. Um, we're also into the second week of lockdown. So uh, I've been struggling a little bit with lockdown uh, this time around. So I think Jess has too. Yes. Yep. We've been talking about that and we think probably everyone's struggling a little bit more this time. But we've got to try to reframe it um, as a positive because there's no other option that we really have. Um, and with that in mind, uh, this is going to go out to all the staff and the squad players too. We want to use this next week, today's Monday, starting today, we want to use this week as a little mini off season. Let's hope that this lockdown ends at the end of this week and we can get back onto the court. So let's use this remaining week of term as a mini off season mm -hmm. to try to get ourselves physically ready um, for getting back on the court. So. At the end of this video, I will in the description print down a little program that I'm going to get everyone to do that wants to do it. If you've already got a fitness program going, that's fine. Just keep going with that. If you don't have one going, you can use this one. And if you want to grab push pause and grab a pen now, you can, because I will go through it briefly. So today, once we get off this video, I want you to get outside and go for a 30 minute jog. So that run can just be at about a six out of 10 rate of perceived exertion or six out of 10 effort, which means you should be able to maintain a conversation while you jog. Yep. Um, if you get too breathless to talk, you're going a bit too hard. So just back it off a little bit. So that's Monday's a 30 minute run. Tuesday, do a five minute jog just to warm up. And then in sets of 10 or 20, so you can do 10 sets of 10 or five sets of 20, do 100 jump squats, do 100 plank shoulder touches which means you're in your push-up position and you just tap your shoulders like this, all right? 100 alternate lunges, so whether you're walking and lunging or just lunging foot to foot on the spot, um, 100 sit-ups, and then at the end of that, 30-second pitter-patter. So if you, do, if you do 10 sets of 10, you'll do 10 lots of 30-second pitter-patters. If you do five lots of 20, you'll do five lots of 30-second pitter-patters. So I'm tipping everyone's gonna do five lots of 20 get less pitter patters that way. And then on Wednesday, okay, in your driveway, or flat bit of land, it can be slightly inclined is even better. You do a 10 meter sprint, walk back, 50 meter sprint, walk back, 100 meter sprint, walk back again, then do another 100 meter sprint, then a 50 meter sprint, then a 10 meter sprint. So it's like a pyramid, 10, 50, 100, 100, 50, 10. So that's 200 meter sprints in a row. Is that okay? It might rain. Do it in the, <laughs> it's only water. You're just going to get wet. Get wet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then on Thursday um, will be an easy day because you had three days in a row. So Thursday will be an easier day where uh, we actually want you guys to grab your rackets, yep. get out into the driveway, in the lounge room, don't hit the lamp, but go through all your swings and correct footwork patterns. Imagine that even if you put a tennis match on the telly or YouTube on your iPad or something, one of the French Open matches, and shadow what you're seeing on the screen. Mm -hmm. Or just get out on the deck with the racket and just pretend you're playing point after point. Serving, forehands back, hands moving forward, volleying, smashing, all the shots. Mm -hmm. Just get into the motion and the, the muscle memory of actually swinging your racket. That can be really valuable. And then Friday, we'll do a 30 minute run. Oh, actually, I've got to go back to Thursday. <laughs> after you've done your racket swinging, this is a really, this is just a suggestion, it's a wonderful suggestion. Get yourself into some meditation or some yoga just for between 10 and 30 minutes. There's heaps of different apps and things you can find online, mm -hmm. but to spend a little bit of time being mindful, a bit of mindfulness training is really important yeah. when you're stressed in lockdown and so on. But in particular on the tennis court, when things happen too quickly, when you're under pressure and the mind starts to race, having the ability to go into a meditative state is really, really important. And that's one thing that Jess brought to her training when she was a high level player um, and she did that off her own bat and we'll talk more about that later as well but that's a really valuable thing yeah anything you want to add no that's i think that's really good if they can do 30 minutes great if you can only do 10 minutes that's okay just try to get into that whole you know balanced breathing get into that mindset of just letting things go and just being in the moment that will really help you on court yeah absolutely <laughs> And then Friday, it's gonna be an eight out of 10, 30 minute run. So after the easy day on Thursday, Friday, it's gonna be a 30 minute run like the Monday, but at much harder, 
and you really want to feel pretty well smashed after that run. Mm -hmm. um, because on the weekend, you're probably going to take it easy, get out there if we can and have a hit if lockdown comes to an end. Um, so having done a 30 minute run on Friday, we're back on court for a full week, you'll be feeling good for that, okay? If, we, if the lockdown does get extended, you'll probably hear from me on Sunday and then we'll talk about rejigging for another week, all right? Um, so the next thing then that I wanted to talk about, having uh, been watching a lot of the French Open on telly, and everybody can watch French Open. There's replays of matches on YouTube every morning, so you can, you can all access some of the tennis that's happening at this moment uh, and see some of those matches. And it occurred to me to ask the question like, so these kids that are on the court playing, I call them kids, but they're adults, these players that are on the court playing, like what is it about them that enabled them to make it to the top level? And I think that one thing that they all have is ownership of their own game and the ability to self-manage. So when we have that, and especially um, at the moment with the COVID protocols they've got in, in the matches as well, there's no crowds out there, the, the five balls that we've got here with the fifth ball on top, the fifth one being the management ball, that's super important and that's what this is about. So what you need to be able to do is to plan your days, take the training on board, take ownership of what it is that you need to work on and don't wait for your coaches to tell mm -hmm. you what it is that you have to do, but rather take ownership of that and put to work those things for yourself. Um, Anything else you want to add there, Jess? No, I just, I think through that then filters down into managing yourself on the court, managing yourself off the court as well. Um, and I think if you can have more of that understanding of you taking responsibility fully for everything that's, you know, that's in your, um, in your world and in your tennis sort of position, then everything else will flow and it will become more obvious about what you need to do the next steps because you're, you know, you're, you have the ownership um, to do it. And yeah, I think that's... Yeah. You can't wait to be told. We can show you what to do. We can tell you what needs to be done. But at the end of the day, you're the players mm -hmm. um, or even the coaches. You want to get the most out of your coaching. Um, you're, you have to get the most out of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and although mentors and coaches are very important, um, it's really important that at the end of the day that if you really want to make it, you're the player on the court mm -hmm. or you're the coach on the court with a group of young players and you're the one that has to do it. Mm -hmm. You can't look to anyone else really to guide you when you're out there doing it for yourselves. So that's where taking ownership of it and learning, being a, a student of the game yourself for life is super important. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one thing that all those players out there, and some of them are so young, they've got a level of maturity beyond their years. Yes because they've understood from a very, very young age that you need to be able to do, um, to take on the responsibility for your own game. All right, well, thanks everybody. Yep. We've got to wrap it up now. The kids are calling me and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye guys. Bye.